tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tock, tock. A real Celtic talk show by real Celtic fans from the Car Look Shamrock Supporters Club on Hail Hail Media. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tock, tock. I was just a young boy, and you were just a young girl, we heard that roar. Standing on the terraces, we knew we'd never walk alone. No matter where I travel, no matter where I talk, the thing I want to see the most. The Glasgow Celtic score I've been to Munich, been to Paris and Berlin I watched injustice fall upon you in Turin And I've shared the pain and glory with the friends that I have made As I dance from place to place in green and white On a worldwide temporary Roared the boys to victory From the north to the south to the east and west The Tims of many cultures From Aloha all the way to Bangladesh Singing songs together As a Celtic family second boot launch in Glasgow. Uh, his first boot launch was about five months ago after Celtic had won the league uh, the same night and uh, it was an unforgettable night and uh, well I can't remember it but I've been told it was really good but uh, different circumstances today we drew two each but I thought we'd done okay and a uh, good young team we've got there so that's good. So obviously with the amount of people that's turning up uh, to see Paul's book launches and stuff like that, meet the guy and obviously the guys that are reading his books and uh, reading his tweets and these things on Facebook and his blogs and he's listening to him on the radio and stuff like that, he must be pig sick of hearing about him. But uh, uh, he's a legend and he's, uh, he's known as the Green and White writer and he does well and he puts a lot of our thoughts and words into words so that we can read it, it's excellent stuff. It's never going to win for that prize, but it's good for Celtic fans like us. So it's good for everybody to come here, and uh, I just want to just say thanks to you all for coming, and I want to introduce Paul. Paul's going to do a bit of talking about his book, and uh, his, his last one he spoke about was Paul's Goals and Hesseling. So this one's a compilation of his two previous books to that one. So, uh, with this included as well, so and there's a few extra bits in it as well. So uh, it, 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 it speaks about stuff that loads of Celtic fans are thinking about, especially like the Doogie Gate and things like that. And uh, then it went back to talking about Love Street, and and then he's talking about, about just just issues that basically the Celtic fans are thinking about. And uh, it's Angus excellent, and we've got something in print that we can all actually relate to. He's just a normal guy like us. But uh, we always say, MD could write their books, so why doesn't MD else write them? So he's actually taking the time out and writing these books. And I'm sure it's the guy's pleasure to stand up here and speak about his books and basically speak a lot of shit like myself. But uh, he'll obviously be a lot more eloquent. So there's various amounts of internet bam pots in here tonight, I can see. And uh, yeah, and there's a. Heavy contingent for the Kabuk Shamrock as well, the Shambolic. Woohoo! Uh, they'll, they'll be staying in Glasgow tonight because the drawbridge came up at half six. 
And it's unbelievable. I went to school with these guys, but it's unbelievable. Aye, but it's unbelievable. It's a right orange hole, and I'm really surprised at that because I didn't think the Reformation got out that far. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they're, they're doing all right, these guys. They're missionaries. That's Kevin, one of the main missionaries there. And, uh, so, I just, I, bless you, me, ramble a lot of crap. And I've been nice to Paul, so hopefully he'll be nice to me. So, uh, I'll introduce the main man, and Paul will tell us a bit about his upcoming book. So, I want to put your hands together for Mr. Paul Larkin. <laughs> Jason, the average Jason, he was sober, so. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, I know it's hard financial times we're here now, but. What a pipe! I'll take two. Um, and uh, the, reason why, the reason why we're here is, is for a book launch, and the book launch is about Albert Doogie and Wim, and that's a combination of three books from Albert of Long, Doogie Doogie, and Wim's Tims. And if you ever wanted an analogy, uh, about what it's like to be a Celtic supporter, you could look at these kind of things because what you've got is you've got a fairy tale element that Celtic are able to create everywhere they go. You've got fantastic support and fantastic stories from all the supporters, and you've got us blatantly being cheated. So, I w I'd like to talk about first of all the kind of the, the, the books and why I wrote these particular subjects. From our work with love, uh, I can see there's a few 21 year olds like myself in here who remember this. Uh, Love C86 was, a, was an epiphany for a lot of Celtic supporters. Um, you know, at that time, Celtic had won the league for four years, we were up against it. But that was a time in Celtic's history when, when we were under pressure, that's when we were at our best. You know? We had a discussion earlier on about referees and stuff, and people were saying, you know, it was worse than the 60s and 70s, but we almost had a great team in the 60s and 70s that could, co that could uh, cope with it. When, but when we come to uh, Love Street 86, we had a, a different kind of enemy, you know, the cousins of William, whatever way you want to call them. But just at that point when we thought that we were going to lose the league and stuff, we didn't. It. And it's not just because uh, a wee guy from Lockheed he scored two goals against Hearts and, you know, Celtic just had that fairy tale element in them, and that's important. You know, that's the reason we all stand in these places, because we understand that Celtic's not just about results. If it was just about results, we'd all be supporting Barcelona. I mean, didn't we? We support Celtic because it's more, it is more than a football club. Robert Kelly said that in 1962, that Celtic's more than a football club. And it's always been more than a football club. And it's because of games like Love Street 86 that it is more than a football club. You know? Um, and I collected a lot of stories for that. So, they were talking about, so we took fairy tale elements. So, the fairy tale element of Celtic's important. Because it can never be underestimated, and we were talking to Jim Blythe for the Celtic Grave Society on Monday about this. There's been a kind of thing about Celtic where, where it, it kind of sometimes feels like, you know, in terms of Celtic football club, the, the club was formed, and then the next thing we won the European Cup. And that's just, that's so, so wrong, because so many greats played for Celtic, um, and it's important to remember that Celtic, for a long time, was formed as a charitable organisation. I wasn't interested in football results, I wasn't interested in, you know, being anything like that, like we're all used to now in the Champions League that. It was there to feed and clothe the Irish immigrant community in the East End of Glasgow. So for that institution to be formed for those reasons, and then go on to become the best team in the world, it, you, you can't write stuff like that, and I certainly can't. But, I mean, we can't ever... Uh, overestimate the importance in that because we were formed for the, the right reasons and those reasons were to feed and clothe the Irish immigrant people in East India Glasgow and we read now, only today in the Herald, that we're going to finally in this city have a, a, a memorial to Angola Moore that's been long over and it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be on the gallery and it's not going to be in Shettleston, and it's not going to be in the Calvin, it's going to be right slap by in that city centre, where it should be. Because that's what we, that's what, that's the reason we're all here, right now. Because most of us will be descended for that horrific incident. So that fairy tale was never more evident at Love Street. And that's why we won the league. 
And then we move on to Doogie Doogie. Do you know the lovely Doogie McDonald? Now, the most important thing about that incident was not the fact that Doogie denied us a penalty. We've all seen us being denied a million penalties and stuff. It was, a, it was the mere fact that the SFA thought a good strategy would be to lie to a Celtic manager. Now, does that mean that that was the first time they had ever lied to us? I don't think so. We know that we've had, we've had injustice and all that kind of thing. So, what's different about now? What's different about now is we're not accepting it. Nobody in here is accepting it anymore. Each and every one of you, you've changed. You've stood up to the establishment and you've said, you know what, I'm not going to take this anymore. And Doogie Doogie changed everything. And it changed everything because you know what, there was an internet backlog that exposed the bigotry against Celtic when that happened. Because our decisions and our manager was being talked about and talked to by a guy who thought that it was a good thing to do to send an email about the Pope and to mock child abuse. That went on forever. We all know that went on forever. The difference is, we're not going to accept it anymore. Now, an interesting thing about that is, about three months ago, somebody says to me, nothing's ever going to change. It's still always going to be like this. And I looked at him and I said, are you kidding me on here? I don't know if you've noticed, but our arch rival is gone. Kaput. They're never coming back. And this, mass, this, this, this circus act that masquerades as Rangers, they're next. They'll be the next one out the door as well. Trust me. Because when the, when the people realise they're watching an Elvis impersonator and no Elvis, that's when they'll start running down. <laughs> We're fortunate for the fact that the only people that have ever tried to define Celtic by the deceased club are the media in this country. We've never needed defined by Rangers. We've never needed it. And we've proved that. Because as a writer, I love learning new words. Love it. And one of the words I learned more than anything over the summer was Armageddon. <laughs> yeah. Armageddon, eh? And the thing about Armageddon is, is when they preach that, I'm just going to have a guess here. I don't think they envisage me and El Messi coming to Celtic Park. <laughs> I don't think they envisage Celtic getting a 30 million cash injection. And more importantly, they never envisage that their team would be dead. Because that's what Armageddon is. Armageddon happened for one club. No, no the rest of Scottish people happened for one club and they died because of it. Now, why did they die? And why did we survive? We survived because, let's face it, we expect to get we expect this country to f us at every single opportunity. Yes. So we didn't look for it, help anywhere else. We done it ourselves. And you can be proud of that, because the law over the city, they never done that. And the reason they never done that was because they expected to be helped. They were the establishment team. Yes. They expected to be bailed out. They were too big to fail, they thought. But you know what? They did. And the reason was because of a mentality that they'd been bred into them forever. There's a man from Edinburgh called James Conley said something which resonates to what he said. He said, you don't rise above the people you claim to represent, you rise with them. And that's what the Sierra supporters did. As a family, right out throughout the world, we rose together and we saved our club. And if you think back to those dark days of the 90s in 1994, if somebody had told you, you know what, nine years time, you'll be in Seville with 120,000 in your own family. You'd never have believed it, but we've done that. And what, and what is, so what, do we, what does that tell us about us? First of all, it tells us that we didn't take much crap because anybody that's going to see like in the 90s knows it wasn't that great, you know? But then, of course, we didn't know that the opposition was being bankrolled and looking for every advantage they could. Because it's interesting that last week, 12 years to the anniversary, 6-2, six, six goals against Rangers. Because you've ever envisaged that in the 90s? But it happened. 
And while we all probably were that day thought we weren't even safe till we scored the sixth goal, you know we never, <laughs> you know we never envisaged that. There was one man that never envisaged that ever happening, and he's not a Celtic supporter. He's called David Murray. He never ever seen us as being a threat to what his whole empire was. And Martin came and he destroyed it in one game. And it's neat coincidence that a year later the EBT started and the unfair advantage came into play. Martin O'Neill should have been a manager that was helped Celtic win 12 league titles in a row. Because don't kid yourself, that's what we've won. 12 league titles in a row. Yes. You know? Uh, I've seen a discussion in the Olympics that say Usain Bolt was going to be the first guy ever to retain the 100 metres. And Michael Johnson, who could run 100 metres himself quite good, said, no he won't, because Carl Lewis did. And Gary Lineker said, well, but Ben Johnson was the first guy over the line, to which Michael Johnson replied, but Carl Lewis was the first guy over the line legally. And that's what it is. So anybody that tells you that we didn't want these titles back, they never experienced it. And anybody that doesn't want the titles back, I spent about 20 grand boards in a big league, so if you want to give me that back, on you go. <laughs> So we get to the present day, the last few years, things changed. Everybody in this room has been, has either seen or been the victim of the ugly side of Scottish society. And we all know what it is. It's Scotland's secret shame that we've all had to put up with, and we were all told we were paranoid about. And we were all told that, you know, it was all a conspiracy and it was all this kind of nonsense. And now look at us. Just think about what's happened in the last six months. Did you ever envisage on Valentine's Day when, when they were in the administration that now they'd be gone? And they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe the hype, because they're not coming back. Now, I'll, I'll not keep you all night. I know you've got drink to buy from me. And, uh, <laughs> but what I'll say is this. It's no coincidence that Celtic are able to win leagues in the last game of the season, whether it's Loughshire 86, whether it was when we stopped 10 in a row. And let's think about that, when we stopped 10 in a row. What would have happened if we had stopped 10? We would have been ridiculed for the rest of our lives about that. Yes. But we stopped it. And exactly. And it was built on sand. The whole thing was built on sand. Don't let the media ever tell you that they did not. But Celtic being put to the wall for nine million quid, Rangers have friend, friendly bank managers. Friendly bank managers. You ever met a friendly bank manager? But, so, we get to this point, and so, where are we now? The whole summer we were told Scottish football was finished. There was no point, nobody would go back. What did that tell us? It didn't tell us that we needed a strong Rangers. It told us that the SFA and the SPL needed a strong Rangers. And that's important. Because that tells you that what we've had to put up with in the last however many years, in Jesus' case, so many, we've had to put up with a lot of stuff that was labelled paranoia and labelled that you know everything was wrong and all the rest of it. What we now know, without any shadow of a doubt, is that we weren't paranoid enough. We knew that there was a juggernaut against us yes. that was looking for every single opportunity to kill us. Yes. In 1994, when we went to the wall, the re one of the reasons we went to the wall, we almost went to the wall, is because we had an establishment trying to kill us. Nobody for the SFA, nobody for the Premier League stepped up and said, you know what, we have to save Celtic. We need a strong Celtic. Yes. We need to ask that. We need to say that. What they did was drive a hearse, a hearse up Kerrydale Street. That was the feeling in Scotland. Now, when we get to 2012, and the worst thing that ever existed in Scotland is killed, why shouldn't we be happy? Why shouldn't we be happy? Because every single one of you in here has been the victim of that organisation. Every single one of you has lost great nights out and wonderful celebrations and were victimised and made to fear and question your own identity because of that organisation. But what they never figured out and what they never ever thought would happen was 
the bank ports beat on him. <laughs> and it's those same bank ports that are going to ensure they're never going to be a threat again. Never. And Charlie Green and Ali McCoy and all the rest there, when they're long, long, long gone, we will still be standing here. And Glenn Daly singing that song for a in 125 years of history, and it'll be because of each and every single person in here and the Celtic family worldwide. Right now, TikTok is joined by the much more talented Higgins brother, Jason <laughs> Higgins. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, mate. Cheers, Richard. Good lad. Now, we've just heard you, obviously. You were up eloquently introducing the Green and White writer, which yeah. is a copyright, of course, for Graham Wilson. I, uh, I was indeed, yeah. The Green man himself, Mr Paul Larkin. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yep, uh, we're in here in Blackfriars and Paul's doing his second book launch in Glasgow. And he uh, died. I totally deserve the guy, puts a, lot of, puts a lot of hours in writing about Celtic and stuff like that. One of the things you see in fact was everybody in this room have got the same kind of memories, the same kind of you know, Celtic uh, visits etc. Oh we could do this, we could do that, but he did it. He's exactly, done. and that, that's it, you know, when you read these books you say, oh, I could have done that, I've, I've been on the trips, I've done this, I've done that, no, but who actually does it, exactly. you know, and it's it's amazing that if you're a Celtic fan, you know, stuff like that, like you go on holiday, you buy a book like that, and uh, it's brilliant to you lying about the pool and just think, look at your memories back, all these away trips you've been in Europe and stuff like that, nice, and he's, aye, and he's, he's sort of describing it vividly, his experience, and you're, you're comparing it with your experiences and stuff like that, we've all got our own experiences, but sure. we're all still part of the same deal. Exactly, same family and stuff. Yep. So, today, uh, dropped a couple of points, you know, it's two each draw, yeah. Hibs, what's your thoughts on it? You thinking of the youth in the team? Thinking, uh, you know, you always want a Celtic victory, obviously, yeah. but you can't demand it, you can't expect it. What's your overall thoughts now, just kind of after the game itself? Uh, to be honest, you're very positive because right. uh, I, I was, I was at the end of the game, was gutted. Obviously, we dropped a couple of points, but first half we were one 0 up. Hibs didn't even give us any threat whatsoever, and uh, with the lineup that uh, Neil Lennon put out, obviously we got a couple of injuries to Lennon and stuff like that. But, uh, given Twarzik a game, Paddy McCord, whatever. Uh, good, good. In the first half, without we, we Tony, Tony Watt missed a good chance. He put it by the post, yep. and uh, obviously we get Lustig scored. So I think that's his first goal for the club. I'm not entirely sure is that Lustig's first goal. Oh, yes. I get things wrong quite a lot. So uh, <laughs> as you've I'm sure that was Lustig's first goal. So uh, no, that was excellent. And uh, at the end of the first half, you were like Hibs didn't really give as much a threat, but they came out totally different in the second half. Yep. They went for it. They made it one each. But then we went out the park, and I thought we it was a great goal for. Her perspective, their goalie spilled the ball but it was great reactions for us, then sure. Lustig did get the second, obviously sure. maybe a bit of an own goal for them as well, but he done excellent so I was happy to 2-1 up, I thought we would have went on and won it, and then that's a great goal for Hibs for their perspective, I think, and not Meg Matthews and then uh, the boy finished it excellent Definitely. but then towards the end uh, with just a couple of good chances, Twarzak put one over the bar, Paddy done a great run put one by the post, so you go to see yourself on another day, we, we could have scored seven or eight. Aye. But it wasn't to be, and no, that's good because it's a competitive league. The last thing yeah. you, you, you want Celtic to win 10 0 every game, sure. you're a Celtic fan. But if you're watching Scottish football, you're saying it's a fair play to Hibs. Aye. And I thought Hibs brought a decent support down as well, made it a good atmosphere. Yeah, they were right up for it, they had their own version of the Green Brigade, which was quite good as well. <laughs> and uh, nah, it was good. And uh, when you left again, now you've got to be the new one, but no, happy days. Armageddon's not built up to me. Aye, that kind of never really worked out, did it? Nah, it didn't work out. No. Or as Paul said, it did work out, but just for the one team. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking of that Armageddon, let's paint that picture for us. We've got uh, Barcelona coming, we've got Benfica coming, we've got Spartan Moscow coming. Are you up for that? Were you happy with the draw, first of all? First of all, I wasn't happy with you know? the draw. No, I was gutted because I was wanting new trips, I was wanting right. new experiences. Right, that but then, see, when you analyse the actual teams that are in it, there's Aye. no bloody many places where they've been. Well, this is it. So, when you actually look at it like that, you're saying, well, fair enough. So, you're inviting Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, and that to Parkhead. Happy days. Aye. You know, I'm not, I'm not a great lover of Barcelona myself. I'm a 
I love La Liga and my team's the Bass team, Athletic Bilbao, so ah, yes. uh, I don't like Barcelona, but right. I admire them for what they do, the football they play in that is, is unequivocal as far as I'm concerned, sure. I just love watching them, but that that's going to be some ticket. And special mention the uh, Celtic board for uh, 85 quid for the three tickets, for right. 84 quid for the season ticket holders. You know, it's just a brilliant. I was expecting 100 quid. I was expecting the cash in. And they could have easily have done it. Aye, and I think they maybe listened to us guys in the Hill Hill Media Network. Aye, so that's a nice wee segue there. So Hill Hill Media, the band pots, we spoke about that tonight. You know, Paul's going to nicely say this isn't just about launch, it's an internet band pot party. Yeah. Happy with the way those things are going, because obviously you're, kinda, you're in regular contact with the guys, homeboys, lost boys, everybody. The guys have been there for years and years. But it seems to be, you know, the popularity is just through the roof. Aye, well obviously it started off with Lost Boys and uh, to be fair, I've been only into it for about a year. But guys like Chris McGuigan, Chris McGuigan Aye. for the Lost Boys, he's thought it started off and then you get David Harper involved. Now Harper, a good mate of mine in Ireland, so he's one of the main guys, obviously. Yeah, behind the scenes, the work he does is un- unbelievable. Definitely. So him and Joe McKenna with the homeboys, so they invited me and Paul Larkin, the Green White writer on on board in the show and it's a pleasure to actually do it and just Aye. talk a lot of crap myself too. <laughs> if anybody listens to me they know it's a lot of crap. <laughs> Uh, and these guys are heading up to Belfast soon as well? Yeah, Aye. yeah. We're going up to Roddy McCordy's club uh, in the Glen Road in Belfast up Mandy Town up the end of the end of the end of this end of September. Right. And uh, we're going to hopefully record a show for there. So the Green Bay Riders no booked up yet, but we're happy to get booked up. But right. me, Harper and Joe were there. Brian. That'll be the first time in the same room together. Oh my and, uh, god. So I could just all usually over Skype, isn't it? It's over right. Skype, so hopefully get a wee homeboys live phone and show for there, so that should be good. Nice one. But uh, no, it's happy days and uh, things are going from strength to strength, Richard, you know, it's uh, <laughs> Your guys at your cell, a TikTok show, it's brilliant. The stuff I listen to you guys know with the STV show. When you go to all your road shows and stuff like that, get into work. You no, know, you've got the earphones in since you leave the house, walk up, get a train into the town, it's brilliant. Super you know, and uh, then the guys from America, Graham and the Rev and stuff like that, Beyond yep. the Waves. And Josh, I mean, Josh, the amount of work he does behind the scenes, obviously yes. designing the Hill Hill Media site. Actually, we're going to try and grab them later, so Aye. you're right enough. So all that kind work. of stuff. And Mr. Larkin, he, he'll go anywhere, you know, he just, he's a wee <laughs> media whore, isn't he? <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> oh, no. He's happy it is. No, he's excellent, but he's, he's encyclopedic knowledge of Celtic. You know, the bottom line is that's what you want to hear, because oh, he knows oh, everything oh, about Celtic. Oh, I've been going to watch Celtic for was about three years old, but I can't remember last week. <laughs> You know, so I'm just, the guy, I'm just in for the banter. Brilliant, good man. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us. Have a good night. Thanks, thanks, mate. Cheers, Cheers bud. TikTok, 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 TikTok. Right, TikTok is here with the, the World Wide Web Wizard. That's hard to say. That's four Ws. Uh, Mr. Josh Gaffney, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good man. Now, I've used that a lovely title, of course, because you've been behind all of that magic on Hill Hill Media at the moment. What's happened to Hill Hill Media and where can all the listeners and the viewers and stuff check out things? Well, basically, the website is Hill Hill Media, and uh, Richard Swan was the one that designed the original website. Uh, and basically, you know, I just took the elements for that website, you know, just combined it with, uh, you know, some of the bigger websites that are sort of the, the same sort of style, and, you know, basically just mix it together. Brilliant. And you've been getting some great feedback, you're quite happy with things? Aye, we've been getting, getting some great feedback, uh, you know, loads of tweets for Twitter and, you know, the, the stats have been good as well. Magic, magic. What else is still to be done? Are you still working on it? Is there still things getting transferred across or can the listeners, you know, see everything they should see at the moment? Oh, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, right. We're working on that episode guide which will basically, you know, list out every single episode uh, of each podcast. Uh, there's a shop to be transferred over, you know, right. there's a lot of more finer details as right. well. So you just work on that. I so if if I'm a fan, I'm a park head, you know, bump at EA, maybe see in the pub or something, and I ask you, what is Hill Hill Media? How would you answer? That's a tough one. Uh, basically, I'd just say a collection of Celtic podcasts, right. you know, basically just fan views, and basically you can come on and you can listen uh, to the show that suits your style. Right. You know, but there's a show that sits everyone out there on Hillbilly Media. Uh, you know, just check it out. Hi. So we've got phone ins, we've got our kind of homeboys and stuff, we've got your good friend, of course, uh, Graham over in America with Beyond the Waves. You also take part in stuff, what are you up to these days? Uh, I'm doing the part of his previous shows, you know, basically just 50 minutes, tactical side to Celtic. Right. 
Uh, and that's before he's trying to do it before every single game. Is it going to be before every home game? What's your kind of tactics for that? Uh, we try to aim for be before every uh, game, right. uh, but sometimes you know with the European ties, you know it's sometimes it's hard to the timing and stuff. To fit it up. Sure. Are you basically saying Graham isn't pulling his weight? Is that what you're saying? Live on air. <laughs> 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 I, won't like it. I, wouldn't you, I would never put you in that position <laughs> So quite happy the way things are going uh, Hail Hail Media has of course broke through the 250,000 listens barrier as well uh, Quite impressed with how the band boats are running with things Aye, uh, you know, 250,000 listens, it's, it's a great thing to aim for It's uh, quite crazy and achieve. Uh, no, my other website's paid aim for like you know so many page views per month. Right. But to get like even just one listen, uh -huh. no, that takes a lot of effort. Sure. But to get two hundred fifty thousand, you know, and the, the rate of growth of Hill Hill Media, you know, yes. it's been fantastic. I mean, Hill Hill Media only really took uh, you know sort of momentum, you know, back in the early two thousand and twelve. Sure. Uh, you know, and for that's good to uh, 11 shows now. Quite incredible. And what about the team? What about on the pitch? Are you quite happy with the way that's growing? The young guys that are in there, the, the people we've added in recently with the transfer window and stuff? What's your thoughts? I'm quite happy with the transfer window, to be honest. Uh, you know, getting that strike on and uh, Elf Ambrose, the defender. Mm -hmm. uh, as we seen today, there was four youth players in the team. Uh, you know, it was just great for to see them get a run out, even though the result wasn't the best. Sure. You know, I think it's a real good experience for, like, say, Tony Watt and Bob Tarzak. Aye. And you think they've got the time to do that? There's kind of less pressure on them and the fans will be a bit more forgiven? Aye. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite happy with that. Uh -huh. Europe, the draw, Group G, etc. What, what was your thoughts there when you seen that coming out? I think it's a group that I'm quite experienced with uh, Benfica and Spartak Moscow. We've got the better of them before, so I think sure. they come. I think the, the, the two teams coming in the group, you know, they'll be aiming to, you know, get the better of us this time. But hopefully, we'll have that little bit of quality, you know, just to edge past them again. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we'll end up? I'd like to see us get second. Would you? Um, but I, I think we've got a reasonable chance to, you know, get the thoughts. Because uh, you know. Benfica and Sparta Moscow, they're no world beaters. We've faced them before, we've got the better of them. Uh, Benfica, we've got the better of them in the group stage, and Sparta Moscow, we've got the better of them in the qualifying stage. Sure. Good man. So finally, where can listeners see Hill Hill Media website? Uh, listeners can see the Hill Hill Media website at hillhillmedia.com. Good man. Thanks a million, Josh. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tock. TikTok is here at the book launch Internet Barnport Party and what better Internet Barnport would we have than Chibchenko? Hello Steph. Alright, how you doing? Which one do you prefer? Um, Are you on duty tonight? Are you a Barnport tonight? No, no, I'm, in, I'm undercover tonight. You're undercover? Aye. Fantastic. Now, one wee thing you've done recently of course was the, the mad uh, jump, the bungee jump. <laughs> how did that go? Oh, um, it was pretty much the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. But, you know, raising <laughs> you it money it? for charity, I did it. Yes. The guy before me almost shot it, so I was kind of <laughs> a bit nervous about it. But oh, God. I, so I just went up and just had to go for it, really. He looked down, that was his problem. Oh, see, I, see never exactly, looked down. Exactly. Never looked down. Would you do it again? Uh, if I had to. <laughs> If it was a matter of life and death, I'd do it again, but I think next time I'll just do a sponsored silence or something. Seems a bit safer. Mate, are women doing sponsored silence? Gee, come oh, on, I'm, come I'm, on. I'm quite good at that. In fact, you on Twitter are doing sponsored silence, come on. That would be a challenge. Very much so. So, what was the charity? It was Sense Scotland. Excellent. And you were happy with what you managed to get together? I was delighted, yeah. yeah. Like, everyone was really generous. The initial target was 150 quid, and I raised over 600 in the end. So Fantastic, well done. It was all through Twitter, so... Fantastic, good lass, good lass. Yeah. Uh, the game today, what's your thoughts? Um, I mean, it was just two defensive errors, wasn't it? It was, you know, Forster made his first mistake that he's made for a while. You know, you can't... You, it's, the young guys did okay, I thought. Um, I thought the fans were a bit harsh on them at times. Sure, um, the booing at the end and yeah, so on. Yeah, that, you know, that's take. not for me. No. Um, Jackson Irvin did well in the second half, I thought. Right. Kind of a bit of a mention. Um, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, you know, it's just one of those games. We're going to have a couple of those games this season, especially concentrating on the Champions League. So, mm -hmm. you know, just need to accept it and move on. Champions League then? Where are we going to finish? What's going to be the big games? Um, 
Yeah, I think I think the, the way the fixtures have worked out, I think, is quite well. You know, home in the first game, home in the last game, they're going to be quite important. Sure. Um, the two game, back-to-back games against Barcelona, we can't really expect that much from them. Right, um, apart from an incredible atmosphere. Aye, well, of yep. course, aye, the last games were brilliant, so... Uh-huh. Um, but no, I, th- I mean, I think we can take Benfica and Sparta at home, definitely. Uh-huh. Hopefully get a result against either one or both of them away. Uh-huh. Not expecting wins, but, you know. Good enough. Yeah, we c- I-, I reckon we could probably finish second. I think we can definitely finish third. Excellent. Okay, okay. Quite confident. Are you going to take in any of the matches I- away? <laughs> Um, you booked any oh, mads, you know, Ryanair trips for three pens via Sydney or, you know, <laughs> Reykjavik? Well, I'm, I'm not, not yet, but right. I'm home. Um, I was at the, the last 16 game against Barcelona. I went to that one away, ah. which was pretty decent. So Good on you, yeah. I'd quite happily go back to Barcelona. I'd love to go to Moscow, but... What would you? Cheap food, That's man. Central. Vodka. Oh, Can't like that. Oh, dearie me. Dearie so, me. Try and stay focused here. Stay professional. Sorry, sorry. Put on a good image Let's for the internet. Pal pods. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, back to the team. Favourite player of the moment? Sam, Big Sammy. Hi. Man, turn that around. Aye, he's class. Like, I was just saying the other day, actually, um, uh, yesterday was the first year anniversary of Team Samaras. The tagline, so, yes, the hashtag Team aye. Samaras, which you are uh, guilty of or proud of. I don't know which one you want I to choose. I think guilty is probably the best word. Yep. I think a lot of people hate me for it, but I'll accept that. <laughs> Has it been because of your hashtag that you've turned this game around? I, I like to think so. Right, Definitely. and the same question from that is, when are you starting the Kelvin Wilson one? <laughs> is that too much pressure? I think that's a bit too much to ask, to be honest. But you know, he played well the other night, didn't he? He did exactly. That's so is that a wee corner turn? Have you seen the kind of a mirror image of Samaras there? Hopefully, he'll um, go in there. I wouldn't go that far. Just hope. We'll see. We'll see. Wait and see. Wait and see. Aye. Good stuff. There you go. A top internet band, but fantastic. So enjoy your night and thanks for talking to us. No worries. Cheers. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tock, tock. Okay, hell hell, TikTok is finally, finally here with the green and white writer. Copyright again, obviously, Graham Wilson, beyond the waves. You have to, you have to, you have to say that. <laughs> You've got to get that in, haven't you? He's murder, see him, he's, he's US patent. You know, he's kind of stuff. American, so therefore highly strong. <laughs> Very litigious. Yes, we're here with Paul Larkin. Paul, you enjoying your night? Are you pleased with how it's going? Yeah, it's good. It's, um, it's obviously not as raucous as the last time because we won the league and all that kind of thing. Richard was steaming, but... <laughs> Uh, it's been good. Uh, I think that uh, uh, people have come through all over and a guy from Luxembourg stayed with me last night and he was like, oh, you're nervous about public speaking. I said, that's not what you get nervous about. What you get nervous about is at Friday night, the night before they do, you think, what if nobody comes? What's <laughs> going to st- happen? Are you still thinking that? Aye, I mean, oh, because, uh, you know, I have to pretend to be a man of the people. <laughs> so I have to pretend to have all these kind of apprehensions when I know that there's loads of women out there that are desperate to be with me tonight. But... <laughs> On the basis of knowing BJ Mack, I knew there would be people here. <laughs> that was enough to unlock a door, fair enough. Right, let's let's play pretend, right? I've got the book, I've read the book, it's done uh-huh. it dusty. Do you it for your family? Yes. What, all your family? All my family. Can we discuss right. that off here? <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to share on Kindles. <laughs> I've got you. I'd got shoot you. people like that. Sorry, sorry. No, let, let's pretend we don't know it. We don't know the book. Uh-huh. How would you s- describe it to any other subject? Uh, it's a collection of three books, which is from Abbott with Love, Doogie Doogie and Wimps Tims. Two of them are about fairy tales that happened in Celtic when in the last, uh, the league in the last game of the season in 86 and 98. And one of them is about the correlation that happened when we actually realised that here's the proof that we've always been cheated that it was standard in the SFA to turn around and say, well, we can lie to the selling manager, because that's what we always do. So these were things were kind of collected, and so what I've done was I put them all together because, um, you know, I'm kind of, like, uh, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's also in that a thing called Channel and Charlie Mulgrew, which has probably brought out the most conversation because <laughs> I accused... Certain yes. internet bampots. Yes, now, now, now allow me to jump in there on behalf of, of the bampots. Uh, Chris McGuigan, uh, an upper class English yeah, voice, that's who true. Just, just puts on a Belfast accent. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Graham Wilson, mm-hmm. 
a highly addicted free base cocaine user who is and an actor who knows nothing about Celtic. And there's a predatory homosexual. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, Alleg these are facts. Allegedly. These are facts. Okay. Uh, number three, uh, former player Simon Donnelly is a full on wine guzzling alcoholic who spills the beans about the club to you or Facebook chats. That's actually true. That's true. That's okay. really true. <laughs> number four, probably. And I should say about Simon Donnelly, not only is he that, he also still gets ID'd in supermarkets. Oh, sorry, Simon. That's poor, that's poor. <laughs> number four, probably the most worrying. You hired a married prostitute to walk on your back in stilettos while you were lying face down on a kitchen table. Mm. Explain. Well, <laughs> I mean, we all have our proclivities. <laughs> and, um,. <laughs> <laughs> all know. those stories. I mean, where, well, listen, where, are like, where are we going? Is there, it artistic there's a, license? There's, there's, there's a, an element of truth in all yeah. <laughs> There's an element of truth in terms of maybe these incidents did happen, perhaps, with the prostitution. <laughs> but what the whole story is about is apprehension. Sure. Okay? My apprehension, having wrote a silly book 10 years ago and then coming back to writing, I thought, you know, what if everybody hates me? What if people are like, you, you bastard, I thought we got rid of you, you know? <laughs> and all that kind of thing. And that, these were genuine thoughts, oh, to be serious for one minute. Right. These were genuine thoughts about, you know, what if people just be like, piss off, you know? We never liked you the first time, we never liked you now. And then that kind of changed a wee bit. So what I did was, you know, play with that a wee bit and say, you know, what if, what if people thought they knew me because I was on all the shows and stuff and thought, what if they actually didn't really think, what if they didn't actually know me? Right. What if everything was a load of nonsense I'd been talking? Um, and so what I did was then for the next book that I've got coming out, not to plug that, but... No, no, that's the next thing I well, want to talk about. The thing about yep. that is, yep. not, not to go into that just now, but what uh -huh. I'll say is, there is a story in that called Projecting Paddy McCoy. Uh -huh. And what that's about is ego. Right. In other words, going to be apprehensive about being in the public domain again to people saying, oh yeah, we really like you and we really like your stuff and that kind of thing. <laughs> ego can, could go wild. So I thought, let's play with that. Let's, let's, let, let's just assume that's not true, that my ego went completely nuts. <laughs> and I got into these situations along the lines of teaching Paul McCartney how to write songs <laughs> and stuff like that, because he's a big success. And so I thought, right, okay, let's, you know, let's, let's play with that. Let's, let, let's assume that we go for born the most apprehensive, anxiety-ridden person in the world, right. which I was about the books then, into the biggest ego maniac in the world, and where can that take us? Right. Which still doesn't say that Graham Wilson and Chris McGregor are fakes. <laughs> and should be driven from your media every uh, opportunity. You have skirted round that, I'll, I'll need to speak to Harper about that, maybe start a campaign. He's the chief executive, Richard, you know that. Yes, the, the governor. people of the streets, the David Harper, Drogida, the banks of the boing, because a big King Billy fan. <laughs> He's the man. You just can't kind of stop this artistic licence, can you? You say anything about artistic licence. <laughs> <laughs> no, so... The, you've, you've discussed, funnily enough, there are a couple of psychological things, you yeah. know, looking at people, their behaviours, egos, etc. Yeah. Big charity tonight mm -hmm. is on the mental aspect. Yeah. What's the point behind that? Tickets? Yes. How many? That's undisclosed at this point, uh, just well, in case. I'll be, I'll be in Kaluk tomorrow. <laughs> I think there's enough people here for Kaluk, but just <laughs> propping up these Johnny charities. Johnny McKay's here. Johnny McKay's here. Your, brother, that's your, your family member. Yeah. Sorry, carry So on. the charities. What, yeah. What's the big thinking there? Because you can pick up a, a million charities that Celtic fans know about, well, of course. Well, you know what? Let me say something controversial. Some charities don't appreciate help. And they can be a little bit, and I don't just say this myself, I know a lot of people have said this as well. You can do a lot for charities and you can promote them quite a lot, and they might not be that thankful. So I thought, you know what, let's get us a bit more personal. Let's talk about mental health issues. I've suffered mental health issues, as you can probably see for this interview, and I was suffering from post traumatic stress disorder in 2008, which kind of never leaves you, but you control it better after right. four years. And so, I realised that you know it's a, it's a silent thing, it's a stigma. We have a we have a, a society which says he's mental. Right. You know, if you're rich, you're eccentric. Yes. We have a society that says that if any one of us now won the lottery tonight, we're not going to be sitting beside Lizzie and Phil and Buckingham Palace anything soon. But if we'd done that in America, we'd be sitting with Barack and Michelle over Sunday dinner because we've got loaded. You know that's how it works. It doesn't work like that in this country. If you're working class and have issues, you're, you're a head case. If you're rich and have issues, you're eccentric. So I wanted to kind of talk about that and say to people, I understand this, I've been through it, you're not alone. Talk about it. It's a cathartic process. Right. Catharsis comes from a Greek entity, comes from a Greek god. 
speak to people. We are here. We, this, there's a family here. We're all part of that family, the Celtic family. And it's not just about football, because we're, we're more than a football club. We are not. If we were only a football club, we'd always support in Barcelona, because it was just about results. Let's go and support Real Madrid. Yeah. We didn't do that. The reason we're here after a pathetic 2 0 draw against him is we know we've been here before, we'll be here again, but we'll always be Celtic. Yeah. And I wanted to say to people, use that Celtic family. Get on Twitter, get on Facebook, get on email and say, I'm struggling here, can you help me? Aye. Because they will. And when, they, and when that Celtic family is united, which is what the media will always try and do is to divide us all, yes. when that's united, it's an unstoppable force. Very true, very true indeed. So the force that's next is this next book. Yeah. What's the timelines and stuff? Timelines, good question. Greek, you're getting better at these interviews. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Ego. <laughs> this camera, this camera works. But well, the camera might terrible. Uh, <laughs> timeline. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I, I've never told anybody this. This is true. It's an exclusive. For about a week last week, I thought I lost the book. Computer. Oh, the computer problems. Kaput. And I genuinely thought. I had lost the book. And you know who saved me? Josh Gaffney. Oh, there you right? go. There you go. I mean, bit, let's face it, it, he's a bit of a weird though. But <laughs> he does know computers. Which I think you have to. It's that border of insanity and genius, isn't it? That's right. So, unfortunately, he's never near genius. But <laughs> So he saved it. But what is about? We're talking October 26th for release. Right? Okay, okay. It's been the last four years. My mental health issues and what I went through and how the mindset of the Celtic support changed. That's why we're Bamports. Right. I've been a Bamport, you've been a Bamport, we're all Bamports here. Yep. And just how it changed, the Dallas thing, the Rangers thing, all that kind of thing. It starts off, and this is the most important part of the book, it starts off with a once upon a time story. And it's about a referee, a great one referee that everybody would know if I mentioned him right now, right. who joined in the 80s, the SFA, and he has mapped out what it was like to be a grade one referee in Scotland. Including, for example, when he became a grade one referee, he was told, don't worry, we've got you in the Masons in Wishaw. <laughs> Why would I need to be in the Masons in Wishaw? Well, the boys would feel better about it. Oh my God. And you won't be blackballed. Well, why would I be blackballed? Because you're a Catholic. Ah, the Masons, I don't know what to be part of. He has got loads and loads of stories about I'm trying to open up people into the mindset of how this happened. The corruption and the bias against Celtic was the let's give a penalty against them. It was far more intelligent, it was far more far reaching. And because of that, he's went, you know what, if you can make this no point to me, I'll give you the whole lot. I was going to ask you, so you don't name him, no, you just not name all his sources. But he won't name prominent people in the SFA, both now and in the past. And by prominent people, I'm talking to Dallas. I'm talking Bobby Tate, I'm talking all these guys that made your life a misery. Wow. This guy's going to write the book on them. Right. Well, I'm going to write it, he's going to tell me. But this guy is going to tell me. Because I think, Richard and BJ, that uh, BJ. It's very dodgy in a toilet, isn't it? Aye, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can all apologise. I think, my thing is, I think there are people out there right now that probably have forgotten that Neil Lennon was actually attempted to be murdered two years ago. Yes. So, I think that I needed to remind people, this is how it used to be. Right. And we, we, we never used to be in any band pods. We were never able to expose the corruption until now. Can See, I... in the 80s and 90s, we had nothing. Yes. We just had to sit there and take it and shout and ball in pubs and all the rest of it. We right? tiny groups. And what we were shouting about was this. For example, in 1997, George McBride chopped off a goal at Ibrox where George Cadet clearly scored a great goal. Right. We all knew that, we all hated it. Then, in 2001, his brother chopped off a goal at Ibrox when it was cleared on his So the thought is, we live in a small country, we have a huge media, why didn't they report the fact that there was two brothers in the SFA? There's a quirky story. There's John Martin with a knife through his head. That's something that people would be interested in. They never. The first thing we were aware of that was when he chopped off 97, 2002. What was the difference? Two different brothers. It's been there and it's always been there. The difference now, because of people like yourself, we can expose it. Yeah. Yeah. It happens and we'll be on your back. By all means, try it. But don't moan when we say, actually, this is wrong, and you're corrupt. And you know how we know this? Because we're more intelligent than you. <laughs> and that's what it's always been. You know, I don't include Harper in that, obviously. But, 
<laughs> but, Sorry about that, Chief Executive. But the, the big thing about Heal Heal Media is it's our reaction to what you do. Yes. Right? Yeah. We, we have a sounding board where people like you, Richard, people like you can say, actually, you're wrong. That was wrong. That was corrupt. And here's why. Right. And you know what? We hate that. Brilliant. Good stuff. Well, that's going to be a fascinating book for a lot of uh, right, so that's the book, that's the timeline. What's it going to be called and how are we going to get to get in touch with it? And well, it's going to be called By Any Means Necessary, a journey okay. with Celtic Bampots. By Any Means Necessary is it's a Malcolm X quote, but Malcolm X quote, but like all my books, it's a double meaning. It's not a book by any means, it's not just a book by any means necessary, we'll fight back. It's by any means necessary, the SFA and the Samson will screw us. Right, right. Gotcha. that's what it is. And a journey with Celtic Bampox is my mental health issues, and then meeting people like yourself and talking to people like yourself and realising that, not regarding my mental health issues, that there are actually like minded Bampox out there who are like, actually, I'm not going to take this push. Uh, We're going to fight back. And that we were a big part, I mean, obviously, we didn't rape Rangers like the Murray and White did, but we were there to say, this is what's happening. Right. You know? And that's what it's about. It's about the rise, including a great article for, your, for yourself, Richard. It's about the rise of the internet ban pots and how things will never be the same again. Brilliant, good man. And the last thing, something that is also changing as well, you spoke about it on stage, and Gortimore, Glasgow. In Gortimore, we're going to have a, a, a memorial in this city which has got the heaviest Irish influence on the planet that does not have an Angotra Memorial. And as I say in the States, I'm embarrassed by what I see in New York and Philadelphia, the beautiful monuments to what was this? What was the Irish Holocaust? It yep. was the Irish Holocaust. Two million people died now, two million people had to leave the country. Yep. Terrific. This, and as I say, there will be no ghettoization of this. It will not be in the Gallagher, it will not be in Shettleston, it will not be in London Road. It will be slap bang in the city centre and it will be a tribute to every single person that contributed to the city for the minute they set foot on it till now. And most importantly, we have a monument at Celtic Park that is Celtic Park, and that was because of Andrew Kerens. And we can never ever forget that, we'll never ever forget that, that this guy came over and said, Look, we need to feed and clothe and get these people out of poverty. The Irish I mean, said, how do we do it? Well, let's start a football team, make some money. And that football team became the best team in the world, and that's a great story ever in football. Definitely. And that, that monument is just going to be another sign of those changes, yes. sign of those progress. And let me tell you, if any of these people who are anti that monument, fine, go for it. That's, that's my message to them, go for it. Because you know what? We're here. We're going to defend it with every inch in our body. The bampots are ready. Especially you, Richard. <laughs> You're on <laughs> <in> the front <laughs> line. <laughs> Excellent, Paul. Thanks a million for taking the time Thank to you. talk to us. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Very good. I came to stand beside you. The triest of the rise of fascist tides Black girls eyes are powerful and wealthy Frank Ryan's plan came from the other side Even the olives were fleeing As the battle for the red of thunder